welcome back to my channel uh, in this video i'm going to discuss a very important topic which has been asked so many number of times in your examinations and that is hypoxia so what are we going to learn in this video session we will learn the definition the classification the causes and the features of different types of hypoxia so first let's understand the definition what is the definition of hypoxia hypoxia means deficiency of the oxygen where that is at the level of the tissues so there is lack of oxygen at the tissue level there is one more term which we have to understand along with hypoxia which is called as anoxia so what's the meaning of the word anoxia anoxia means complete absence of oxygen at the tissue level so lack of oxygen or deficiency of oxygen at the tissue level is hypoxia whereas complete absence of oxygen at the tissue level is called as anoxia so there are four parameters based on which the hypoxia is classified what are they arterial partial pressure of oxygen arterial hemoglobin content which indirectly translates into the oxygen carrying capacity the rate of blood flowing to the tissues and the utilization of the oxygen by the tissues in order to understand the concept behind the classification of hypoxia and also the causes of hypoxia we have to know a simple transportation of oxygen now the oxygen has to be transported to the tissues so whenever there is lack of oxygen at the level of the tissues that is what is called as hypoxia so where is this oxygen coming from the oxygen is coming from the air or from the atmosphere so what's the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere or in the air the partial pressure of oxygen in the air or in the atmosphere is 160 mm hg so this air is inhaled now for the inhalation of the air we need a properly functioning lungs as well as the thoracic cage now once this air is inhaled the air is going to enter into the alveoli and by the time the oxygen enters into the alveoli the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli is going to fall to 104 mm hg now why does this occur this occurs basically because of the humidification of the air so once the oxygen with a partial pressure of 104 mm hg is there in the alveoli the next step is this oxygen is going to diffuse across this membrane which is called as the respiratory membrane that's why the third thing which is required here is a properly functioning or a normally functioning respiratory membrane the first thing required is a normal partial pressure of oxygen in the air which is 160 mm hg second thing is the properly functioning lungs and the thoracic cage because these are the two structures because of which the air is inhaled inside and the alveoli is aerated now once the air is entered into the alveoli or the oxygen has entered into the alveoli this oxygen has to be diffused the diffusion is occurring across the respiratory membrane so once the diffusion has occurred the oxygen with the partial pressure of 104 mm hg is now present in the blood which is this structure this is the pulmonary capillaries so the pulmonary capillaries are going to drain into the pulmonary veins by the time the blood has reached the pulmonary veins the partial pressure of oxygen has fallen to 95 mm hg that is occurring because of the shunting of the blood so from the pulmonary veins the blood is going to move to the left atrium from the left atrium it moves to the left ventricle from the left ventricle it is pumped into the aorta and from the aorta it goes into the capillaries so as to supply to the tissues so what is the partial pressure of oxygen now in the arterial blood the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood is 95 mm hg so once it has reached the arterial end of the capillaries from here the tissues are going to extract the oxygen and whatever oxygen is remaining now it is going to enter into the venous end of the capillaries so by the time the blood reaches the venous end of the tissue capillaries the partial pressure of oxygen has fallen to 40 mm hg so remember that arterial po2 is 95 mm hg whereas the po2 in the venous blood is 40 mm hg so anything wrong which is occurring in this entire pathway starting from the level of the atmosphere till the level of the tissues is going to cause a lack of oxygen at the tissue level 
For example, let's say the partial pressure of oxygen in the air itself is less, which occurs at the higher altitudes. Second thing is, let's say there is some abnormality with the lungs and the thoracic cage because of which the aeration of the alveoli is not happening. So what does that cause? That is going to cause a reduced amount of partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. Third thing is, let's say there is something wrong with the respiratory membrane. So what is going to suffer? The diffusion of the oxygen across the respiratory membrane is going to suffer. So all these things which I have mentioned to you, what they are going to cause? They are going to cause a fall in the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood. So any reason which is going to cause a fall in the partial pressure of oxygen in the arterial blood is coming under the category of what is called as hypoxic hypoxia. It is called as the hypoxic hypoxia. So once the oxygen has entered into the arterial blood, this oxygen will bind with hemoglobin because we know that 97% of the oxygen transported to the tissues is transported in the form of oxyhemoglobin. Now let's say the hemoglobin content is less, then what is going to occur? Again, there is going to be lack of oxygen which is supplied to the tissues. Now hypoxia resulting due to this reason is what is called as anemic hypoxia because this is occurring due to lack of hemoglobin. Third reason is sluggishness of the movement of the blood. The blood is not flowing to the tissues. The partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries is normal. The hemoglobin content is also normal, but the blood flow is not there to the tissues. If that is occurring, such a kind of hypoxia is what is called as a stagnant hypoxia or it is also called as ischemic hypoxia. Now the last type of hypoxia is going to occur because something is wrong with the tissues. Okay, what is wrong with the tissues? The tissues are unable to utilize or extract the oxygen. Here everything is normal. The arterial PO2 is normal, the hemoglobin is normal and the flow of blood to the tissues is also normal but the tissues are unable to extract or utilize the oxygen from the blood. Such a type of hypoxia is what is called as histotoxic hypoxia. Okay, that is called as histotoxic hypoxia. So based on this, we are having four types of hypoxias. Hypoxic hypoxia because of reduced PO2 where very important it is in the arterial blood. Anemic hypoxia because of decreased hemoglobin in the blood. Stagnant hypoxia because of the reduction of the blood flow to the tissues and histotoxic hypoxia because of reduced oxygen utilization by the tissues. So these are the four types. Now let's understand the characteristic features of hypoxic hypoxia. Now as I have told you, in hypoxic hypoxia, the most important feature is that arterial partial pressure of oxygen is low. Hence, arterial oxygen content is low. Hence, the saturation of hemoglobin, what we call as the percent saturation of hemoglobin is also low. Now, there is one more very important parameter when we write regarding hypoxias that we shouldn't forget and that is called as A minus V PO2 difference. This is nothing but the difference of the partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries and in the partial pressure of oxygen in the venous blood. So here what is happening in hypoxic hypoxia? The partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries is reducing. So what will happen to this difference? Obviously the difference will be less. So A minus V PO2 difference is going to be low. Next let's understand the causes of hypoxic hypoxia. I have already discussed this when in the second slide I was telling you a overwave of hypoxia. High altitude. So what happens in high altitude? In the high altitude the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere itself is less. This is one of the causes of hypoxic hypoxia. The second thing I told you is that the air which is there in the the oxygen which is there in the atmosphere that has to move into the alveoli, isn't it? For that we require two things. One is we require a normally functioning lungs. We also require a normally functioning thoracic cage. Why I am telling you the thoracic cage here is because the muscles of respiration are attached to the thoracic cage. If the muscles of respiration are failed or there is something called as respiratory paralysis, even in that cases, the aeration of the alveoli is going to suffer. Now, this can occur in some systemic disorders like myasthenia gravis, which is going to cause paralysis of the respiratory muscles. 
okay this can also occur in some of the congenital anomalies of the thoracic cage like uh, kyphosis scoliosis and all that even this can occur in trauma whenever there is multiple fractures of the ribs even at that point of time the person is unable to inhale the air and hence the aeration of the alveoli is going to suffer and it can occur in any disorders of the lungs like bronchial asthma copd and all that even in cases of restrictive disorders so disorders of the lungs and the thoracic cage abnormalities also cause hypoxic hypoxia then disorders of the respiratory membrane like ARDS which is nothing but acute respiratory distress syndrome even that also causes because the diffusion of the oxygen has to occur across the respiratory membrane so if there is any disorder of the respiratory membrane even that is going to cause hypoxic hypoxia last but not the least hypoxic hypoxia can also occur whenever there is ventilation perfusion mismatch so these are the causes of hypoxic hypoxia next let's understand the features of anemic hypoxia so in anemic hypoxia the arterial partial pressure of oxygen is absolutely normal but what is wrong here is the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is reduced why because there is a reduction in either the rbc count or there is a reduction in the hemoglobin concentration so if the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood is reduced that means the arterial oxygen content is reduced because hemoglobin carries 97 percentage of the oxygen hence the oxygen arterial oxygen content will be reduced that is why the saturation of the hemoglobin will be also reduced now what will happen to this parameter that is a minus b po2 difference the partial pressure of oxygen in the artery is normal the partial pressure of oxygen in the venous blood is also normal so a minus b po2 difference will be normal in anemic hypoxia what are the causes of anemic hypoxia anything which causes anemia so like a decrease in the rbc count which can occur because of the bone marrow depression which is also called as the aplastic anemia which can also occur because of the hemorrhage it can be acute hemorrhage or it can be even chronic hemorrhage it can happen because of the decreased hemoglobin content this occurs because of the deficiencies like iron deficiency anemia vitamin b12 deficiency anemia folic acid deficiency anemia all these can cause decrease in the hemoglobin content even decrease in the hemoglobin content can also occur because of the hemolysis like hereditary spherocytosis or it can also occur because of the sickle cell anemia or there could be altered hemoglobin like normal hemoglobin is not there there is more amount of abnormal hemoglobin like myth hemoglobin or it can also occur because of the carboxy hemoglobin so this carboxy hemoglobin is formed in what is called as the carbon monoxide poisoning okay one of the poisonings which is going to cause anemic hypoxia is carbon monoxide poisoning why because carbon monoxide is having more affinity for hemoglobin so the available hemoglobin to bind with the oxygen will be less so there is more formation of carboxy hemoglobin which can also cause anemic hypoxia the next type of hypoxia is what is called as stagnant hypoxia as i have already told you what is the main reason behind stagnant hypoxia decreased blood flow to the tissues so this decreased blood flow to the tissues can be generalized or it can be localized phenomenon so it is also called as ischemic hypoxia few books also say stagnant hypoxia is hypokinetic hypoxia that is there is low movement of the blood in the blood vessels so here arterial po2 is normal arterial oxygen content is normal the percent saturation of hemoglobin is also normal so what is the abnormality is that the flow of the blood to the tissues is not happening but what is going to happen to a minus v po2 difference the a minus p v po2 difference is increased that is because the venous blood po2 is reduced that is because the blood is not flowing to the tissues that means the target tissue is not getting enough amount of blood so what is happening is more amount of oxygen is extracted elsewhere so that's why by the time the blood is reaching to the venous blood the venous blood po2 is reduced hence the difference between arterial po2 and venous po2 is increased okay this is a very important point which you have to mention so this is stagnant hypoxia so what are all the causes of stagnant hypoxia as i have told you stagnant hypoxia can occur in a generalized way or it can be a localized way generalized are two very important causes which can occur because of hemorrhage as a result of 
circulatory shock also called as the hemorrhagic shock or it can also occur because the heart is now not pumping enough amount of blood so when the heart is not pumping amount in enough amount of blood the blood which is flowing in the blood vessels will be less that occurs because of the congestive cardiac failure or congestive heart failure the issue can be also localized like there is atherosclerosis of some artery or there is thrombosis in an artery or even there could be an embolism so these are the causes of stagnant hypoxia or also called as ischemic hypoxia next is histotoxic hypoxia here everything is normal but something is wrong with the tissues because of which the tissues are unable to utilize the oxygen so arterial po2 is normal arterial oxygen content is normal percent saturation of hemoglobin is normal everything is normal so what is going to happen to the partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries that is pretty normal so no oxygen is now utilized by the tissues so whatever partial pressure of oxygen was there in the arteries the same will be there even in the venous blood so a partial pressure of oxygen in the arteries is 95 here also it is going to be 95 because none is going to the tissues that's why a minus v po2 difference is zero or here it is nil so there are two very important causes of uh, histotoxic hypoxia the first one is the cyanide poisoning the second one is called as the hydrogen sulfide poisoning so both of these poisonings are going to cause paralysis of what is called as electron transport chain and we all know that electron transport chain is the one which is concerned with utilization of the oxygen by the tissue so remember two poisonings cyanide poisoning and sulfide poisoning so what did we learn in this video we started with the definition of hypoxia we also understood one more term which is called as anoxia then we understood the basis of classification of hypoxia what is the basis what are the parameters based on which hypoxia is classified and remember one more very important thing that hypoxic hypoxia one of the reasons is high altitude hypoxic hypoxia is not just only caused because of high altitude hypoxic hypoxia can be also caused because of disorders of the lungs disorders of the thoracic cavity disorders of the respiratory membrane and something is wrong with the ventilation perfusion ratio then we understood the causes as well as the features of different types of hypoxia this is where i am going to end my video before ending my video if you have understood the concept behind the hypoxia and if this video is helpful for you in your examinations do hit the like button subscribe to my channel and share this video among your friends thanks a lot for watching